Hey guys, good morning, welcome. Come on in, come sit around the table. I'm Andy Lee and this is The Bite of Bread. We are studying freedom this week. So happy 4th of July. Here we are, 4th of July. Hopefully you're off work today and enjoying a day of rest and fun and play. And so I just have to ask, hey Mary, good morning, good to see you. I have to ask, what do y'all do on the 4th of July? Hey Hannah, good morning. Do you eat hot dogs and hamburgers? Or are fireworks a big deal? Do you go to the big displays or do you just do them in your backyard? What do you do? Hey Robin, good morning, and Venus and Kim. Good to see y'all. Hey, I got to meet Robin yesterday. That was fun. So, so awesome to get to meet you. It was an honor. Um, so y'all, what do you do on the 4th? So we kind of already had our 4th yesterday. We cooked out. That's what you do on the 4th here. You have watermelon and you have to cook out. That, that's what we do. Happy Independence Day. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. We don't always go to fireworks because it's hot. It's hot. There's a lot of people, and so we just don't. When I was a kid, I was scared to death of them. So anyway, but I do like them. I just don't like the crowd and the heat. So good morning. Hey, Allison. Good to see you. You go to a parade and cookout and fireworks, Kim. You do it all. That's awesome. That's a lot of fun. When I was little, we had parades, and I was in the parade. That was always fun to do. We got to um, decorate our bicycles and, you know, our dogs, and it was fun. A lot of fun. Cookout. Hey, Sarah. Good morning. Okay, I've got my coffee. Do y'all have your coffee this morning? I have my coffee with one of my favorite mugs that says I need mascara and caffeine. Those are two musts for me to feel better in the day. So anyway, let's get started. Let me hold your hands, pray us up. Good stuff today. Learning another piece of freedom. Yesterday we learned about the Spirit setting us free. Today we're going to read something else that Jesus said that says it's free. So hey Kathy, good morning. Hold my hands. We're going to pray and get us ready for today. So Father, we love you. Lord, we praise you wherever you are, wherever you're praying this morning. If you can, just say, Lord, I love you and I just praise you. Hallelujah. I just invite y'all to pray with me out loud. Hallelujah. We worship you. You are God and there's no other God before us. You are our Savior, our Healer, our Redeemer. You are our brother, our friend. God, you are our Father. We come to you as a child of God. Thank you that Jesus made the way. Thank you, Lord. I pray that freedom will go a little bit deeper in us today, that something will click, that places where we are being held hostage, we will be freed by the word today. Holy Spirit, have your way. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Raina says, Yes, yes, we praise God. Yes, glory, glory, glory. Everybody, glory, glory, glory. Okay, how much fun. I really wish I could see you and could hear you, but I know you're you're out there <laughs> and you're listening and as we praise and worship him together. So you know, I said, I think, at the very end of yesterday's uh, video that I heard this great kind of paragraph within the teaching on Sunday. Jason Basden, one of our pastors at LifePoint, said, Praise is one thing, and worship, I, actually, it wasn't Jason. Mm -mm, I think it was our worship leader, um, Daniel, um, Daniel Walters. But he said, Praise is one thing. And worship is another. And praise we do with our mouth and we do with singing. And and worship is something we do with our life. And so we are worshiping him. One way we worship him is by studying the word, by digging into the word and learning that word and what it means and how it applies. You know, the word of God is kind of like a cheesecake, <laughs> cheesecake, apple pie, 
chocolate bar, whatever you want to put in there, whatever is yummy, delectable to you, it's like that. You look, you look at the cheesecake and it looks good and it smells good, but you don't really know what it tastes like. Hey, Selena, good morning. You don't know what it tastes like until you cut it and you get that fork and you take a bite and you start to chew on it and you start to ingest it and you taste it and then you really know how good that cheesecake is and the same is true with the word of god we are we read it we can read it we can listen to it but not until you really start digging into it cutting cutting through digging into the word looking in it we all can do this. You don't have to go to seminary. Anyway, I'm not sure why I'm spending so much time on that, except that's one thing we can be talking about today is our secret to freedom. Hey, Elaine, good morning. Good to see you. So before I jump way too far ahead of myself, let's get to the bite today. So the bite today is John 8, 36. If you have your Bible, turn with me to John 8, 36. John 8, 36, Jesus is talking. In my Bible, it's in red. See? Is it in red in your Bible? So my Bible, it's in red, and Jesus is talking. He's having this debate with the Pharisees, and we're going to be talking about that a little bit. Sorry, shaking my table. So um, John 8, 36, he says, So if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. I'm going to read it again. So if the sun sets you free, you will be free indeed. Can I just get a hallelujah? Can I just get an amen? Can I just get a glory? Hey, Polly Clausen, good to see you, my friend. So if the sun sets you free, you will be free indeed. That's one that we can memorize. That one's easy. Maybe you already had that one memorized, but today we're going to chew on that and look at the context of the scripture to really understand how do we get that freedom what is a secret to freedom yesterday we looked at the secret to freedom was the holy spirit that moses brought the law and the law was good and the law was glorious and we might think why was the law good and why was the law glorious but it was great because at the time the people were just doing whatever they wanted to do all the religions you know i talked about the the book by francine rivers yesterday um called it's a voice in the wind is the name of the book and it's fiction it's set in that first century when the church is just beginning um and it's a terrible time i mean the other religions are just loose and free and people do whatever they want so when jesus or when god brought the law to his people to set them apart to make them special people who just had this relationship it provided a way for them to get close to god that's what the law was so yes it came it came in glory because of that hey penny cook good morning but then jesus comes and the holy spirit comes and it's just one step further i mean it just you know there was that curtain in the temple that separated god and man but when jesus came that temple that um curtain in the temple was torn and now with the holy spirit we have we are the temple and god lives in us holy spirit is in us and that brings us freedom so that's what we talked about yesterday today jesus is talking to the pharisees hey laura good morning and in verse 36 he says so if the sun sets you free then you will be free indeed we need to understand the context a little bit yeah, not a little bit it always helps to know the context of the scripture so in chapter 8 starting with verse 12 so jesus is having this debate with the pharisees y'all i hate debate I, I just hate debate i'm terrible at debate um uh, i have found that for me that's never helped me bring somebody to christ through debating 
with them. It's been more for me just living what I believe and teaching what I believe. Anyway, but Jesus can handle debate because Jesus is God himself. He knows everything. He knows the Father. He's listening to the Father. And he's trying to tell them that he is the Son of God, that he is Messiah. He is the one that was prophesied to come. And yet they are just trying to get him on anything they can. They're trying to to insult him. They're trying to, to find, pick apart his words. Um, and in verse 12, when Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Something, something I read earlier today said, you know, light is something you just, you just have to look for. You just have, you have to follow. And, and John says, you know, the darkness didn't understand it. The darkness could not comprehend it, could not snuff it out. The light could not be snuffed out. And Jesus said, I am the light. What we don't understand was the Feast of Tabernacles was all about the light, was all about light. And he says, I am the light. Lori says she hates debates too. I'm with you, girl. I'm not a debater. Can you believe that I once went to college thinking I might go into law and be a lawyer just because my dad wanted me to? Anyway, that didn't last very long. So let's go back. So Jesus is talking to the Pharisees starting in verse 12. It's real. I'm not going to read the whole thing because it will take way too long, but go back later today or Tonight, sometimes when you have time, and read this interesting debate that he's having with the Pharisees. I found it really interesting that he's talking about his father and who his father is. Uh, verse 19, it says, then they ask him, so where is your father? And when I read about the, com the commentary in that said they were insulting him because they knew, they knew the the story of his virgin birth, the virgin birth, and um, that he didn't really have a human father, and so they're in insulting him there, and uh, because they were bringing up the scandal of Joseph and Mary, and just we don't think about that, we forget about that, we think people just you know just oh they they didn't really know what was happening, but. Everybody knew it was a small town so Mary and Joseph and that whole scene the Bible doesn't talk about it a lot but it was scandalous what happened and and so but Jesus says I know my father you don't know my father but I know my father and I listen to my father verse 21 once more Jesus said to him I am going away and you will look for me and you will die in your sin where I go, you cannot come. Well, they didn't like that very much at all. And so verse 22, and this this made the Jews ask, will he kill himself? Because they're thinking they had a belief that um, if you committed suicide, then that you're in the bottom level of Hades if that happened. So I think a lot of us think that that's just a, a Catholicism um, teaching, but there was a Jewish teaching about that too. But he continued... Well, he says, um, for I go, you cannot come. And then he continued, you're from below, I am from above, you are of this world, I am not of this world. Oh, can you imagine just sitting there hearing Jesus say this in their confusion? I told you that you would die in your sins if you do not believe or trust that I am the one I claim, claim to be. You indeed will die in your sins. Who are you? They ask. Just what I've been claiming all along, he says. So he's going back and forth trying to explain to them. In fact, testimony was a really big deal back then. You needed two or three people to give testimony of a situation or of who a person was. And Jesus says, I don't need testimony. I am my testimony. My father is my testimony. Testifies uh, about me because I am God. In verse 27, it says they did not understand um, that he was telling them about his father. So Jesus said, when you have lifted up the Son of Man, and he's talking about crucifixion. When you have lifted up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am the one I claim to be. And that I do nothing on my own, 
but speak just what the Father has taught me. That was a prophecy that when the Son of Man came, when Messiah came, he would do what God told him to do. The one who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone, for I always do what pleases him. Can you imagine just this connection with God and always doing what God is telling him to do? Guess what? We can't imagine that. We've got the Holy Spirit in us. And the more we're in tune to that, the more we listen to that, the more we're stepping out in faith of the Holy Spirit. Um, we too can do whatever the Father is telling us to do. Even as he spoke, many put their faith in him as he was teaching, as he was speaking, as his word was coming out of his mouth, many hearts were being softened and many were coming to faith. And to the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, if you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. That word hold means it can be um, also abide. It can be translated as abide. It means dwell. It means stand firm. So he says to those who come to faith, if you hold on to what I'm teaching, if you abide, if you live in what I'm teaching, he says then you'll be my disciples. A disciple was not just one who believed. A disciple was just not one who followed. But disciples, they also began to live and act and breathe as the rabbi, as the one they were following. So a disciple was really more than just a pupil or a learner, but a follower who, who began to live like the rabbi did. And he says, then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. So truth is a big deal here. The truth is key. Then you will know the truth. How are they going to know the truth? We'll go back to that other verse. They will know the truth. In verse 31, it says, if they hold on to his teachings. So that you have to know his teaching, abide in it, dwell in the teaching. And I'm thinking it's more than just reading it. It's even maybe even more than applying it, but you got to let it get in you. you got to dig into it, hold on to it, study it. And I find that the Word of God, the Word of God convicts me, but His conviction, the conviction brings me freedom. We're going to keep on talking about that word freedom. Um, Romans 8, 1, there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. The word, if you find, if you feel condemned when you read something in the Bible, study and dig and talk to God about it and he will bring you that truth and the truth sets you free if someone says oh, I got a word for you and that word does not bring you some freedom um, it may convict you but God's conviction brings freedom if it brings oppression or condemnation on you don't take it don't take that word. Let me take it and go, okay, God, what do I do with this? Show me the truth here. Show me, lead me to freedom in this place. Hey, Heather, good morning. Good to see you. Um, so we continue reading. It says, the truth will set you free. So the word is really important here. And then they answered him, we are Abraham's descendants. So you see, they're just going back and forth on this debate. And these are the Pharisees. And, you know, the Pharisees really felt like they were, they were doing it all right. They were following the law. They were looking good on the outside. But Jesus came and showed them it was so much more than what people could see on the outside. It all had to do with with what was in here, what is in here is going to come out, right? And so it's, he um, said in verse 31, well, I just read that, 33, they answered him, we are Abraham's descendants and have never been slaves to anyone. Had they already so soon forgotten that they were slaves in Egypt? Hello? But anyway, we haven't been slaves to anyone. How can you say that we shall be set free? I love his words. And Jesus replied, I tell you the truth. Everyone who sins is a slave to sin. And that word sin is means a habitual sin. Like you just, just can't 
can't quit, <laughs> can't get rid of it. It's this habitual sin. Everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Now this is great. Listen to these words. Now a slave has no permanent place in the family. And slaves were, were part of the culture back then. Uh, you know, we don't, we do have slavery here that we don't see and we aren't a part of, um, here's some, it's in America, but slavery was just a part of their way of life. It's how they, many of them survived as slaves. Um, so he says, but a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever. Everybody say that out loud, but a son or daughter belongs to that family forever. And that means forever, eons and eons and eons of time. If the son, the biggest son of Jesus, <laughs> sets you free, if he says, free that person, free that person. You're no longer a slave. You're a child of God. If the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. He says, I know you are Abraham's descendants. You are, yet you are ready to kill me because you have no room. Listen to this. You have no room for my word. This is key. Talking about the word. Talking about um, abiding in his word, right? Abiding with his teachings. He says, you have no room for my teachings. And so because of that, you're ready to kill me. I'm telling you what I've seen in the Father's presence. And you do what you have heard. I have seen in the, I am telling you what I have seen in the Father's presence. And you do what you have heard from your father. And then they say, Abraham's our father. And then, ooh, Jesus tells them, uh oh, -uh, Abraham's not your father, but the devil is your father. Well, that made him mad. I don't, I'm going to stop there. That context is so interesting and that debate so amazing. <clears throat> but I don't want to so lose the point here. What sets us free? Hey, Lisa, good morning. What really sets us free, according to Jesus' word here, is. Abiding in the Word, holding to His teachings, holding into the Word. So you go back, and I was talking at the beginning of this broadcast about digging into the Word. That we can read it, we can look at it, kind of like you can look at a cheesecake and mm, it looks good, and but you don't taste it. You can't don't get any inside you until you cut it, you take a bite, you chew it up, and you swallow, and then you can taste it. You get the everything that, that the cheesecake has, right? And so the same is true with the Word of God. We can read it or we can listen to it, but our lives change. The freedom is found when we actually dig into the Word. We hold on to the Word. We live according to that Word. That is what sets us free. The Spirit, Spirit brings freedom, as we saw yesterday, but also the Word brings freedom freedom, abiding in Jesus. Um, so Romans 8, 17 says, you know, we are joint heirs with Christ. He has that piece where he talks, he's talking to the Pharisees and he says, a slave is not part of the family, but when his son sets you free, you're free indeed. And also then not only are we free, but we have become part of that family of God, part of co-heirs with Jesus. Um, the Bible doesn't save us. We know Jesus saves us, but his words will free us. They will give us freedom. No other teaching, no other teaching can do that. Only the words of Jesus, only the Bible, only that can do that. Once I did have a debate, a very short debate, <laughs> with a man who claimed to be a humanist. And I really hadn't been around humanists very much, and I'm not around them very often in, anymore at all. But had an opportunity, we, we were part of an online newspaper, religion paper, if you will. So I got to be around others who, who profess other things and believed other things. And um, one time he said to me, he said, what is truth? There is no truth. 
And that was the saddest thing anybody could have ever said to me. Because if there is no truth, if there, if you don't believe there's truth, if you can't find truth, then I believe we're just lost. There's nowhere, nowhere to stand. There's no foundation. We're just sinking in that sand, right? But our truth, who's our truth? What's our truth is Jesus. Jesus is our truth. And we stand on him. The word of God, this is truth. And I believe when you start living this truth, when you start digging in the word, if you struggle with the Old Testament, just read the new. Just read all of the red letters of what Jesus was saying and live in that truth. And you will find that freedom. We must know it. It's got to get inside of us. Again, the Word of God might convict you, but that conviction I've always experienced is freeing. It frees me of myself. It's freed me from my idolatry. It's a free. It's freed me from my selfishness. It's freed me from my wrong way of thinking, you know, renewing our thoughts. How do we do that? With the Word and that sets us free. The Word of God will not burn in you. It will set you free. So I just wanted to finish this morning with a little bit from a Mary like me. I am, in case you missed me talking about this yesterday, next week we're starting a Facebook group, online group, um, with this book with the Mary like me. It's all about the Marys. It's all about how human they were, flawed yet called, um, yet used greatly by God and um, is to encourage you to step out into your calling. And so if you're interested in being part of that online group, go to my website, wordsbyandylee.com and click on the top. There's a Facebook Mary group um, page and you can click on that and find out what to do to be a part of our group. But I just wanted to read a little bit from it um, this morning. One of the uh, chapters is about Martha's sister, Mary, you know, the perfect one who sat at Jesus' feet. Well, we learned that she wasn't that perfect. But we also learn, we also read about that time when she anoints Jesus. She comes into the dinner and she anoints him and cries over, uh, over his feet. And I wanted to read a little bit about that. Uh, so he not only, talking about Jesus, protected Mary and Bethany and acknowledged the value of his presence. Remember, everybody was like, make her leave, tell her to go. And Jesus says, no, uh-uh, she's going to stay here. She's going to stay here because what she has and what she's done is, is going to be remembered. So he not only protected Mary and Bethany and acknowledged the value of her presence, but he also called her offering beautiful. To the others around the table, Mary's offering was offensive and bothersome, but to Jesus, her offering was lovely. Why was it so beautiful to Jesus? Because the Savior, the creator of the universe, who knit Mary and you and me together in our mother's wombs, always sees the heart of the giver. He knew Mary's gifts, gift was given with a heart of thankfulness and recognition of his deity. Whether or not Mary understood the significance of her obedient action, Jesus did. Do you need to know that you and your offering, your offerings poured out to Jesus are beautiful to him? When our gifts are given from a heart of faith, and love as Mary's were, they are beautiful to Jesus. Her offering is one that might seem morbid or faithless because it involved preparation for death, but Jesus looked right past the present and acknowledged her service as one that will never be forgotten, and it never has been forgotten. Do you know that your offerings, that your when you step out in faith, that it's beautiful? to Jesus. That's what it's all about. Hold my hands. Let me pray you up for today. Father, we praise you and love you. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for just the power of his words, the freedom that the word brings us, the healing that it brings us. Lord, help us hunger and thirst for righteousness and hunger and thirst for your word to dig deep on our own to enjoy fellowship with one another 
but to realize the importance of studying and knowing and ingesting your words and living as a disciple following you. We love you. We praise you, God. We thank you for our country. We thank you for the freedom we have in this country. Let us never take that for granted. Lord, we pray for our government. We pray for the world situations going on. We pray, Lord, that we would be a country that would recognize you as our God, as our Savior, as our foundation. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, Amen and Amen. Thank you for joining. Woohoo! Have a happy 4th of July. Enjoy, rest, sit by the pools, by the beach. I don't know, I'm staying away from the beach. It's probably crazy there. But you'll have a great time. Enjoy the independence and family and friends. I'll see you tomorrow. I will be here. We'll be studying Galatians 5, 13 and 14. Go by to wordsbyindiglady.com. Look at the Mary Facebook group. And you can also find um, this week's Buy the bread list. Mwah! Y'all have a great day. Love you. Bye.